I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things video short. Fun word Friday takes on the word calling. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, share, donate. If you love what we're doing at Higher Things, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app. It's available on all major platforms. Share. Sharing is caring, especially when it spreads the Higher Things love. And donate. A tax-deductible gift to higherthings.org keeps us passing on the faith to the next generation. Our kids need this gospel in these dark times. Every single day, we have a 20-minute live stream Bible study, YouTube, Facebook. On Fridays, I like to sort of communicate something that I thought was interesting during the week. Um, also, I also like to look at words on Fridays, with thus fun word Friday. Today's word, children, is calling. Paul uses the term called three times in the first seven verses of Romans chapter one. Verse one, called apostle. Verse six, called of Jesus Christ. Verse seven, called holy. Now, calling, th that word, uh, kletos in Greek, goes into Latin, vocatus, or vocation, or calling. So, and it's used, and the, and the three uses, and the three uses here really sort of sum up everything. Let's take the latter two uses and then the first use, okay? The Lord called you by the gospel. He washed your sins away in the baptismal font. He called you his child. You are called of Jesus Christ. And that means that you are called holy. That's the two later uses of the term in verses six and seven in Romans one. He called you by the gospel. He called you God's child. He called you beloved of God. He called you holy, set you apart. His calling makes you who you are. You didn't make yourself of Jesus Christ. You didn't call yourself holy. That wouldn't work. He calls you holy and his word changes the reality of your situation and makes you who you are. Called of Jesus Christ, called holy, beloved of God. Now, this calling, uh, this enlivening, enlivens you to what he has for you in this life. See, he didn't just call you by the gospel, enlighten you with his gifts for you to sit around and do nothing. He called you by the gospel, he enlightened you with his gifts, he washed your sins away so that you would be for others. And in the particular place and in the particular time that he has you, that he has called you, he has stuff for your neighbor and that is your calling whether it be parent, husband or wife, son or daughter, grandchild, whatever student, teacher, manager, executive, vice president, repairman, car salesman, trash man, shoe repair guy. Whichever place that he has called you to, that is the place in the particular place and time that he would have you be for others. Parents for their children, husbands for their wives, wives for their husbands, mothers for their children, grandchildren for their children, for grandchildren for their grandparents. Um, did I did I get grandparents for their grandchildren? all of the place where he has put you for the particular place in your life that he has called you. And also in your work, whether you be a student or a teacher or a worker or whatever he has called you to do in your particular place. We had a nice conversation in the uh, MyHT Gold um, members about uh, a nurse who was, who has spent 30 years doing what God had called her to do, being the best nurse possible. And now that she's sort of moving on from being a nurse, God has something else for her. And that's what's so wonderful about the Lord's callings that he, um, that he, they're temporal. 
they're changing. You may be the uh, vice president or executive director of a steel company now, but that not many of what he always has for you. He may have other things for you in the future. Um, right now, I've been called to be a pastor. That is my calling um, to serve God however he would have me serve him. That particular call for him, which is divine, um, a different type of calling, but yet the same, um, I will do as long as the Lord would have me do it. And that would be the first one called apostle. But God doesn't have to have you be called as an apostle or called as a pastor for him to love you. He loves you in the giving up of his son. Being a pastor doesn't save you. Not being a pastor doesn't save you. You are saved in the suffering and death and resurrection of Jesus. And so whatever he would have you do, that would be how you would serve him. You don't serve him better as a pastor or as a youth leader or as a teacher in the church. No, he has a particular, you have a particular skill set. It's like the movie Taken. I have a particular skill set, says uh, Liam Neeson before he busts up a bunch of people who's stolen his daughter. The same you have a particular skill set which the Lord knows and he places you for maximum good in your world for others. You see, the callings that we have are not just only for ourselves, they're for other people. Now, it is true that he has summed, he has called some in the church to be apostles, some evangelists, some, um, some pastors, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Ephesians 5, for the building up of his church, but that's not the only thing that he would have you do is serving God. You know what? When you're doing your particular calling, whether it be mother or father, husband or wife, worker, student, child, son, grandson, whenever you're doing what the Lord has given us to do, you're doing better works than I ever do as a pastor because you're doing the particular calling that the Lord has called you to do. This is vocation and this is uniquely Lutheran. Um, you see, before this, the only way to serve God was to become a monk. That would be the bet or the monk or nun or a pastor or a teacher or whatever, a priest. But with the Reformation came the unleashing of the doctrine or the, or the refinding or the reforming of the doctrine of vocation, where your calling, whatever it may be, is how you serve God in your particular plot time and in your particular place. And with that calling comes the ability to do the thing because God wouldn't have called you to be a mom, dad, son, daughter, wife, husband, worker, teacher, etc., unless he was going to resource you, enliven you to be the best mom, dad, husband, wife, worker, teacher, student that you could be. And if he has something else for you, he will bring you out of that calling into another calling. But he's going to resource you to do those. And those top ones, mom, dad, husband, wife, those top ones, he, he, he keeps you in the faith to be doing those things. We may talk about this more. Let me know. Uh, in eight minutes, it's hard to talk about all the doctrine of vocation. So if I missed anything, make sure you include it in the comments. But now it's enough to rejoice in being called holy, being called of Jesus Christ, being called to do what he has given you to do in the particular place and time that he's been given you to do that. That's a lot of callings. I'm Pastor George Barkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short.